Hi, I'm Paul Mason, and I'd like to speak a little bit about colors, spectral types, and temperatures of stars. So first of all, the color of a star is not difficult to determine. It's one of the things that we can see with our eye as we look up to see stars at night. Some stars are red and the other stars are more bluish. And um, it's relatively easy to determine if we use a detector with a filter that will allow uh, only light from certain uh, uh, wavelengths to enter and um, use that in our images that we take at the, a telescope, we can determine a precise color. By color, what we mean is the uh, method that involves the difference between two magnitudes. Photometry is a method that we can use using a telescope and filters to measure the amount of light, the apparent magnitude, and it may depend on the color that we uh, are trying to determine, which would be the difference between two magnitudes using different filters. So if I use a blue filter, determine a magnitude, an apparent magnitude, and I use a red filter, determine an apparent magnitude, then the difference between those is a color. So if the object is very blue, it will have a lot of light going through the blue filter and not much through the red. So we would say the object is blue. Likewise, if the object is red, there would be lots of red light coming through the filter, the red filter. So that's a way to determine colors, but there's a more precise way, which is called obtaining the spectrum of a star. So we have a prism or a grating that allows us to spread the light into the spectrum of colors, which we're familiar with in everyday life with the rainbow, because a water droplet is able to take sunlight and break it up into the spectrum of colors. So while photometry is a method by which a telescope and filters are used to determine the apparent magnitude and the color of stars, spectroscopy is a method to just study the spectrum of a star using a telescope and a prism or a similar device to split the light up into its rainbow of colors. The spectrum of a star gives us the temperature and the composition. So we might see, for instance, a hot star would have a lot of blue light and not much red or yellow light. A cool star has a lot of red and yellow light and not much blue, but also there are dark lines. And the dark lines tell us both the temperature and the composition of the material. And the material that we're talking about is the surface atmosphere layer of a star, which we call the photosphere of a star, the atmosphere. And atoms inside that atmosphere absorb some of the light coming out. And they absorb that light only at very specific wavelengths or very specific colors, positions in the spectrum. And so by locating these lines, seeing that we have lines at certain positions, we can tell what element is there and the amount, the abundance of that element in the star. We can also tell by the strength of the lines, the temperature of the star as well. So the position of the absorption line gives us the element and the strength gives us its abundance combined with the temperature. Now, uh, a doctor and amateur astronomer named Henry Draper funded a major project to observe the, the spectrum and to photograph the spectrum of as many stars as possible throughout the sky. And the job of trying to come up with a method of, of uh, determining what kind of information all of this contained fell mainly to Annie Jump Cannon, 
um, who was a uh, um, a woman who worked at Harvard and under someone named uh, Pickering. And so she also had led a team of women who analyzed the spectra of stars, and they came up with a system that we now call spectral types. So when stars were first grouped according to their strength of their lines, the groups were given names like A and B and C and so on. Well, eventually, uh, fairly soon actually, that this was determined that this related to the temperature of the stars as we just described. And the letters had to be reorganized, and those letters are O, B, A, F, G, K, M. The hottest stars are up at the top here, O and B, and the cooler ones are A and F, and G here, K, and then M are the coolest. And you can see that there is a transition, a gradual transition from the hottest to the coolest stars based on the lines that we see and their strength. So the temperature can be, in effect, measured by looking at the star, seeing its spectrum, comparing it to this group, and there we have the uh, um, temperature of the star determined. So it can be remembered traditionally by oh, be a fine girl, kiss me, or oh, be a fine guy, kiss me, or make up your own. Oh, be a fine gorilla, who knows? And it goes from the hottest and bluest stars over here of type O to the coolest and reddest stars of type M. In this picture, we can tell that these stars are not very red because there's not much red light. These are much redder, so these are cooler. These don't have much blue light there. These have a lot of blue light. Blue, in terms of a temperature of an object, is hot. Yellow is medium, and red is cool. One of the things that we find kind of pushing ahead is that spectral types of stars will determine, uh, once we determine the spectral type, we can determine properties like the size of the star and its brightness. And we can see here a range from O, B, A, F, G, K, M, from bright and blue and large to small and red and fainter, the M types. So the groups can be broken down further, like a decimal system, B0, B1, B2, and so on. The sun falls into this scheme at G2. It's about 5,800 degrees, and it's classified as a G2. It's got strong calcium-2 and iron lines. And other stars, then, that have the same spectral type as G2 is the sun, if they, uh, they have the same surface temperature as the sun. So that sun, the sun falls just very near the G here, maybe just a little bit over, it's a G2 type star. And that is a useful fact to remember. Now, how does this relate to temperature? Well, there's something called Bean's Displacement Law, and it's a simple equation. The, the wavelength that the spectrum peaks at will be 0 0.0029 divided by uh, the temperature when measured in Kelvin. And um, so we have a, a plot of that over here, the wavelength in nanometers and the peak of the spectrum depends on the temperature and it will shift in wavelength according to this equation. So color and spectral type indicate temperature of the surface. A couple of things that we 
learn at hotter objects emit most of their radiation at shorter wavelengths, so they will appear bluer. Cooler objects emit mostly at longer wavelengths, so they are redder. If the objects emitting are black bodies, which includes stars, the, uh, the additional piece of information is that at any wavelength, a hotter object is more luminous than a cooler one. So at any wavelength here, as we go, the hotter one is always brighter than the cooler one. And the hotter one overall is much brighter than the cooler one. So that is a summary of the spectrum of a star.